grown up in Cleveland Heights. He went to Ohio State. He, like so many other jazz guitarists, uh, worshipped Charlie Christian. He said that uh, he used to go with some of his friends to see the big bands at the Palace Theater. And uh, one day they met Goodman, and his friends were telling him how great a guitar player Bill was. And uh, Goodman came back and sought him out and said, don't go away, I want to talk to you. And another time, it, uh, when Charlie Christian joined the uh, Goodman band, uh, Bill went to Cedar Point to see Charlie Christian. Ironically, uh, it was at Cedar Point where Charlie Christian played his last performance with the Goodman Band. At that time, in the 40s, in the mid-40s, when he was playing bebop with these guys on 52nd Street, this was the new thing, the uh, new experimentation that was going on. And I guess he kept that same attitude throughout his life and went off in other directions later on. Durango did come back after recording with people like uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and uh, Ben Webster and the biggest names in jazz on 52nd Street. And he played a lot of uh, unusual things. He told me that he was not at all happy with the way jazz was going. And he wanted to go off in his own direction. And I think, as a matter of fact, uh, he made some recordings that Ernie was involved in with uh, Daniel Thompson reading poetry and he was playing guitar and all sorts of things. And also he uh, taught. He, he taught to a number of uh, people. Bob Ferraza is one of them. And Bob told me that uh, when he taught, when Bill Durango taught Ferraza, Bob said that it wasn't so much the technique and stuff, he would talk philosophy with him and he would bring in strange philosophical ideas, which he considered, I guess, in a way more important than the physical technique of playing the guitar. Well, I went to interview him one time. He was at the McGregor home. And at that point, frankly, he was uh, battling Alzheimer's. And, but he did remember a lot of old stories. Uh, and I asked him flat out, why did you come home? You were at the top of the jazz world on 52nd Street in New York, and you were recording with everybody. Why did you come home? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> he couldn't remember why he came home. He just didn't know.